This webinar will cover the information we need to gather in order to calculate weight distribution and where and how to find that information. We'll run through a couple of scenarios using the Truck Science Axle Weight Calculator and we'll gladly stay on to answer any questions you have, even if we go over time. Calculating weight distribution is an essential task in optimal work truck design for many reasons. States and cities and counties define limits for how much a truck can weigh and how much of that weight can be borne by each axle. These limits are normally based on the number of axles on the truck and failure to comply may result in prosecution and or fines. Overloading a truck may also void the manufacturer warranty and that is something we obviously want to avoid. Calculating weight distribution allows us to design more efficient trucks that is, trucks that can carry more payload, use less fuel, and require less maintenance. A comprehensive weight study will examine weight distribution in three dimensions, calculating horizontal or axle weight distribution, vertical center of gravity, and lateral weight distribution or rollover stability. While these are all calculated by the Truck Science Programme, we're going to concentrate on horizontal or axle weight distribution today. Vertical and lateral distribution will be covered in more detail in later webinars. To calculate weight distribution, we need to gather weights, dimensions, and center of gravity information for all components, including the truck, body, equipment, and payload items, and a trailer where applicable. This webinar will cover the information required and how to find it. The information we require can be found in a variety of sources. We look at a sample of bodybuilder manuals, OEM websites, a dealer proposal document. We sometimes need to resort to taking measurements manually or scaling drawings from, the, from these documents if the dimensions are not provided. This list is by no means exhaustive and the most efficient way to source the information that cannot be found on the internet is usually to leverage your relationships with the manufacturers. This is a list of what we're going to need to gather in order to do a weight distribution calculation. Please bear with me now as we locate the information, but we will look at a, a much easier way to do it later. Okay, I'm sharing my screen with you now. The first document we're going to look at is the Ford Body Application Guide so that we can choose a suitable vehicle for a nine foot service body. If we skip to page seven of this document, we'll see that it includes a definition of base curb weight, which is the weight of the vehicle, including a full tank of fuel and all standard equipment, not including passengers, cargo, or any optional equipment. This is something that we would use later when we've included a full tank of fuel in the base curb weight. This page 13 shows the 4 by 2 DRW. I'm just going to highlight it for you here. That is recommended for a 9 foot uh, utility body or 108 inch body. It also shows that the maximum payload for this body or for this truck would be 7,200 pounds. While this may be the maximum payload in theory, in reality, your design might not be able to achieve this payload as we will see later. It also just shows a GVWR for this vehicle of 14,000 pounds. I realize that the writing is small on some of these documents. So that's, I've just zoomed in a little bit so you can see that is the uh, relevant row in, the, in this table. You'll find more detailed information about this vehicle in the body build, Ford Bodybuilder Manual or layout book on the Bodybuilder Advisory Service, this Ford BBAS website. When we download this 2022 Super Duty F-Series BBLB, we get a detailed document, and there are a few pages of this document that are relevant to us. So we're first going to skip to page 34, where we find the definition of height dimensions 
where the, the uh, CH is the overall height with standard springs, and the LH is the measurement from the ground to uh, top of floor ribs. And th those uh, abbreviations are, are um, explained in the bottom right-hand corner here. We will find the measurements for those later in the document. So if we go to page 43 now, we find again the 14,000 GVWR with regular cab and a 60 inch CA, 145 wheelbase, four by two, six by seven diesel. And again, that's the maximum payload of 7,200. We find the maximum GAWR for the front axle is 4,850 and rear is 10,040. The curb weights are the unladen, uh, the unladen weights before the body is added to the vehicle are 3,996 here on the front, 2,796 on the rear. And those are all um, some of those dimensions that we and weights we'll need later in order to calculate weight distribution. So we skipped page 55. We get some more dimensional data here. In this case, we've got the front overhang of 38.3, sorry, I'll just uh, highlight that, 38.3 inches. And we've got some more exact, uh, a more exact wheelbase dimension of 145.3. The front axle to back of cab or AC dimension is not specified here, but we can derive it from the wheelbase of 145.3 minus the cab to axle of 60, which you'll see here in this uh, L404 code, giving uh, an AC dimension of 85.3. We skip to page 62. We'll find those height dimensions we, we uh, I mentioned earlier. So again, we find the F350 regular cab, four by two, 14,000 GVWR, 145.3 wheelbase. And uh, we've got the LH of 33 here, and the CH is 79.3. I don't know if you can read those, but I have to take my word for it, maybe. The base tire value then is derived from this uh, tire code, 245, refers to uh, 245 millimeters and that converts to 9.6 inches for the tire width. The tire diameter of 31.8 here is halved to give a tire radius of 15.9. The last page that I've highlighted for our attention is page 81. And here we see that there's a 40 gallon fuel tank as standard. The fuel tank position is shown on the chassis drawing and while its center of gravity is not shown, we can estimate it based on other dimensions on the drawing. It is included in the base curb weight anyway, so it's not that important for this example that we're doing today. So that's everything of interest from this uh, Ford bodybuilder layout manual. We'll move to the NAPIDE website from here to get some information about the body. So firstly, in this specifications section, if we scroll to bodies for 60 inch CA here, and dual wheels, you can go down to this uh, model 600 series 6108D54 body. We get the nine foot, that's a nine foot body or 108 inch body with a height of 40 inches, width of 94, compartment depth of 20 inches, and floor width of 54. We'll also find the weight of the body here as 1306, 1306 pounds. If we scroll back up to the uh, literature section, we can find the Ford uh, steel service body document in the literature section. We locate the 6108D54 model in here. I'll just zoom in a little bit so you will have a better chance of seeing this document. Okay. 
You'll find drawings of the body below, as well as some further dimensions on the drawing, such as this 24 inch floor height. Next up, we're going to need a crane and we go to the Lift More Crane website to find uh, a crane bulletin for the crane that we want. So we just go to products here, DC powered cranes, and we bring up this 2010 uh, REE DC powered crane bulletin. So page two of this crane bulletin contains this drawing from which we can derive the length of the crane as 86 plus uh, 28 minus 15. So we just take the, the uh, horizontal length from these three dimensions at the bottom and we can get the width of the crane from the 7.9 plus 11 is 19. You can also find the center of gravity point indicated on this drawing. The vertical CG dimension is explicitly stated as 13.75 here. And the horizontal CG from the front can be derived by subtracting 15.262 from 86.752 is 71.49. The crane weight of 705 pounds is also included on this page. So we have filled in a lot of the information we needed here already. Um, I just want to pop along to Okay, the next thing we're going to need is uh, some outriggers. And we're just going to imagine that we've used a scale and measuring tape to measure weights and dimensions for the outriggers. So if we bring all of that information in together now, I've filled this uh, document in with the front overhang, cab to axle, rear overhang, chassis weights, uh, body length, height, width, etc. So what are we going to do with that information now? The formula used to calculate weight distribution is, is very simple. To calculate the proportion of a component's weight which is distributed to the rear or weight on the rear is calculated as the total weight multiplied by the center of gravity uh, relative to the front axle and divided by the wheelbase or WB. The weight on the front axle then WF is obviously just weight minus the weight on the rear. With a lot of patients, these calculations can be done on the back of a napkin and most certainly were in the past, but many organizations have been using spreadsheets for years to speed things up. Increasingly now, more specialized software is being used to calculate weight distribution, center of gravity and maximum payload. The Truck Science Axle Weight Calculator is one such program, and two of the advantages it has over a spreadsheet are that of having a built-in library of chassis specs, bodies, equipment specs, as well as built-in verification that your com configuration complies with federal and state legislation. This map shows the states for which we already have legislation. Regulations in dark green are already in the app. The regulations in lighter green are coming next week, and we are working on the uh, states in, uh, in, that are colored in orange there, and we expect them to be released in the app in September. We choose which states to work on next based on user feedback. So if your state is not colored there, uh, you might leave us a comment or, or uh, get in touch in some other way to ask us to prioritize your, your state. We're going to just pop back to the browser now to, um, to do a short live demo with the information that we've gathered so far. To use the Truck Science Axle Weight Calculator, we must first start with the vehicle. You can choose from these manufacturer specifications, or indeed you can use a generic template. But the manufacturer specs come with weights, dimensions, and a true to life, life graphic. So they are def definitely speed up the process. We can just choose a vehicle from the library that and the, the information has already been populated, as you'll see now. So I'm just going to filter this list to find the, the uh, vehicle we need. Filter it by Ford F5, F350. 
regular cab, dual rear wheels, and we saw the 6.7 diesel. We can sort this list based on CA, and we'll choose this 2021 spec for the F350. You will note that the dimensions that are, are included here are this match those that we already found in the uh, Ford documentation. So you can click the vehicle here to open the, the dimensions. You'll see the, the cab to axle of, of 59.9 or 60 inches, wheelbase of 145.3 and the overhang of 47.2. Similarly for width, uh, weights and axles, you will find the chassis weights as well as the axle um, capacities in there. I'm just going to switch here to specify axle uh, capacities in a simplified way for this vehicle. And you'll see that the gross axle weight rating for the front is 4,850, uh, which matches that was in the document, and the chassis weight is 3,996. Similarly for axle two and total. You'll remember that the GVWR was 14,000. We've also got details here on factory fitted fuel tanks and crew. So the, the weight per crew member is 200 pounds and the, the weight of the, or sorry, we have one person included in the crew and the center of gravity or the DCG, the driver center of gravity is 67.7 inches from the front axle. We'll add a body now. I'm going to choose a service body. And again, we can, we can find bodies that we've already saved to our personal library, our team library shared with colleagues in our organization or that have been shared in the uh, public truck science library, which means they're available to everybody who uses the program. So if I just search for that NAPI body I looked at earlier. Uh, it was the... 6108, D54, and it was the um, for the 60 inch CA. So you'll see the 108 inch body here matches that which we saw on the website earlier. We can click on the body to review uh, the 40 inch height. And the weight is 13, uh, 1306, which we found on the uh, on the NetPoint website. You'll notice as I move the body around, we have a, the weight table uh, below here is currently calculating the maximum payload which this vehicle carry, can carry now is 5,702 pounds. We can compare this to the maximum payload in the documentation of 7,200. So as I said, even though the maximum payload is specified as 7,200, it is not necessarily uh, the case that you will be able to achieve that payload. As I move the body around, you'll see that the payload figure will, or the weight distribution changes. And as we move it further back, the rear axle becomes uh, highlighted in blue there, which means that is now the limiting factor. And so the payload starts to drop the further back the body moves now. If you prefer to specify uh, cab to body clearance in text, you can do so here, simply by clicking on the dimension. You can pop the menu back in to find the rest of the, uh, of the menu to do with the body here. We're going to add a crane next. So we go to vehicle equipment, crane, and you can scroll through this public library of cranes to see if the crane that you're looking for is there, or we, indeed we can import a DXF file if, of a drawing of the crane so that we can uh, increase the library for ourselves. So I'm going to import a DXF file here. So I preview the crane, it looks good. I'm going to position the mounting point on the y-axis so that it will be added to the correct place in our drawing later. And we recall the dimensions from the crane documentation we saw earlier, so the length was 100.4 inches. The height is scaled 
uh, based on the length, and the width was 19. The weight was 705 pounds. And the center of gravity was specified in inches rather than a percentage. So the horizontal CG was 71.5. The vertical was 13.8. And we'll just ignore lateral for now in the interest of time. We'll give that crane a description. And then we can save and add it. So we hover over the crane to uh, get it in focus and then we can drag it back up and back. You'll see the, the weights table is, is updated as the, uh, as the crane moves back on the body. I'm going to add some outriggers now. So I, I used a template to create sample outriggers earlier and added them to my personal library. So I'm just going to grab one from there. Again, as I drag the outriggers back, you see the weights table being updated. And the outrigger has been added to the weights table here. You can see the total weight of 805 pounds is what I had specified earlier. And interestingly, the that outrigger is actually taking weight off the front axle. So you'll see if the weight distribution is minus 294 on the front and 1,099 on the back or on the rear. The maximum payload for this configuration is now down to 4,077 pounds. Because we can see that the, the rear axle is the limiting factor here, moving uh, Moving the payload forward may gain us a few more pounds. So we'll just click on the payload here and just move its center of gravity to, let's say, 45%. And we've gained another uh, just over 100 pounds of payload by doing that. So it's gone to 4,192 now. Since this is about 3,000 pounds less than the maximum payload in the that this vehicle is has been uh, specified within the body application guide, you can see the importance of doing these calculations. We can review some center of gravity points, including the overall center of gravity there, which is 103.8 from the front axle and 32.5 from the ground. You can also pin any of the center of gravity points uh, to, to pin them to the drawing. So okay, sorry to interrupt there. Um, just on the on the center of gravity of the crane, um, it it looks like um, one of the one of the numbers there isn't quite right. That vertical center of gravity looks like it's a bit lower than it should be. If you could if you could drill down on the crane, and uh, we can just update them maybe. One of uh, one of um, the webinar attendees has got an eagle eye and uh, and has picked up on it. Oh yes, uh, so I can see the problem. Yeah, um, I specified it as 13.8% rather than 13.8 inches. And I guess that's one of the um, very useful things about the app is because, the, the, you, because you've got this visual feedback, it's easy to pick up on your mistakes, uh, whereas that may have been mis missed in a spreadsheet. There we go, that looks okay. better. Okay, so we'll just pop back to the presentation now. And for the second example, we're going to use a Volvo 6x4 with a 16 foot dump body. Okay, so we'll start by reviewing the documentation again. So we're going to use a proposal document for the VHD64F300. 
And this document was generated by the Volvo sales tool. Okay, we'll start by uh, going to page three here, where we can, I've just included the relevant pages in this document. We can see that there's a 100 gallon uh, fuel tank as standard. The next page of interest is this page 19, where we can see that there's a spare wheel uh, included in the curb weight. And, uh, you know, we do go to this level of detail. The more accurate inputs uh, we can get, the more accurate our outputs will be. So, you know, you will find nuggets of information throughout these documents, which will just help you to make your calculation more accurate. Page 22 then has a weight distribution table, which includes the driver weight of 200 pounds, the total body length of uh, 16 foot, wheelbase here, a uh, dimension of 224. We've got all of these other dimensions as well, the overhang, bumper to back of cab, front bumper to front axle. These are all dimensions which you'll see in a moment uh, when I open this, this vehicle within the app. You can see here that the chassis weight uh, excludes driver and fuel. And, uh, you know, while we, while we don't necessarily find all the information we need explicitly stated in the app, we are able to derive a lot of it from the information we do find. So uh, you remember our weight distribution formula from earlier, the weight on the rear uh, here of, uh, the weight of the fuel on the rear axle is 215 pounds, the weight on the rear, uh, multiplied by the wheelbase of 224, divided by the total weight of 684 pounds of the fuel, gives us a horizontal center of gravity of 70.4 inches. So that's just an example of, uh, you know, information that's, that's uh, there, but maybe a little bit hidden. You can also find detailed uh, axle capacity ratings here. So the front axle itself has a uh, capacity of 20,000, the front suspension of 20,800, and the front tires of 22,800. Uh, similarly, for the rear, you've got the axle suspension and tire ratings, and I'll show you now how to switch back to detailed ratings so that the, the program can work with those within those constraints. You'll see it once again that we can derive the, the tire width from the, the tire codes. So 425 millimeters here for the front tires uh, translates into 16.7 inches. And then the rear tires, interestingly, the code is already working in inches. So the rear tire width is 11 inches. We find those dimensions that I mentioned earlier, bumper to front axle, wheelbase overhang, uh, bumper to back of cab, these, these uh, familiar uh, abbreviations here, BBC, OVH, the driver center of gravity of 64.5 and the Broby spread are the distance between the, the rear axles of 54 inches. Lastly, we can find the, the tire radius for the front and rear and the uh, chassis height, front and rear here, 45.26 and 43.91. So before I go back into uh, the program itself to show you that uh, example, I'm just going to continue on and show you the documentation for the body. So we reached out to TBEI for the documentation for a crystal 16-foot uh, body for this, for this vehicle. And this is quite a, a detailed document again, but if, you know, you'll be able to find uh, the important dimensions such as body length here of 192 or 16 foot. And you'll find the weight of the body right down here as 5502 pounds. The next page of this document includes uh, various height dimensions including the height at the front of 66 and on the rear of 46 there. So I'll just go back out to choose that, that uh, vehicle from our library. But before I do that, I just want to update my settings to specify chassis dimensions as wheelbase since that's what we would normally work in with a vehicle like this and then also to specify my axle ratings in that detailed way that includes the tires and suspension. 
So I'll just reset my filters here so I can find the Volvo vehicle. So again, you've got the nice graphic that uh, reflects the vehicle that we're actually working with. If I click on the, the cab of the vehicle, it will open this vehicle menu for me. And you'll see those, some of those dimensions that we just met, uh, including the, the wheelbase of 224. And then we've got the chassis weights. And, and remember these uh, axle capacity, sus suspension capacity, and tire capacity, uh, and the same for the rear. So you'll just notice here, I just want to draw your attention to this permissible value. Permissible, this, which is the maximum weight allowed on the front axle, is the lesser of the axle capacity, the suspension capacity, the tire capacity, and the bridge limit. So the bridge limit is being pulled in there from the regulations. And so, you know, as well as your, your configuration being checked against what the vehicle is capable of doing, you're being, uh, you know, it's, your, your calculations are being verified against the state legislation. So we just, um, we'll just add the body here. We want to add a dump body this time. So straight away, you can see that the, the weights table below has been updated with the body weight uh, of 5502. You'll remember that from the Christiel document. And so we've got a maximum payload with this current configuration of 24,886 pounds. You'll see that the rear axle is the limiting factor because the total gross is standing at 34,000, uh, which is matching the, the permissible value for that axle. The front axle is, has got a further 4,670 pounds available, but because the rear axle is maxed out, our payload is restricted to 24,886. You'll notice as I move the body rearward, the weights are updated on the fly, and because the rear axle is the limiting factor, more of the weight is being transferred to the, to the rear axle, and so the payload is dropping as we go. I can just update that cab to body clearance again. Or indeed I can use this undo to just to uh, revert back to where, where it was to begin with. I want to just test overriding the, the payload. So we've got this figure of 24228. If I click on that, I can uh, lock the payload at, say, £25,000. You can see now straight away that the rear axle has become overloaded. In later webinars, we'll talk about adding pusher axles, which will obviously increase the carrying capacity of this vehicle. But for now, let's experiment with changing the weight of the body. So the body weight is 50, or sorry, 5,502 pounds. You can also specify this as pounds per foot. And we have a lookup table here where we can experiment with changing the body material. So let's imagine we're going to use standard aluminum, which is about 255 pounds per foot. And straight away, you'll see that we're no longer overloaded. And in fact, if we unlock this payload figure, we should be able to achieve more than 25,000 pounds payload. Slightly more at 25,713. We can undo that change to the body weight. That was just a, um, an experiment. And we can add further equipment here, such as sample hoist. I have just added them earlier here so that we speed up the process. Hydraulic tank. And really, as long as you've got weights and dimensions and center of gravity for any item of equipment, you can use a rectangular template to add it to your drawing. 
If you prefer to have true to life graphics, you can use the import DXF or import drawing feature to, uh, you know, to, to make the, the drawing more, um, more impressive, I suppose, when you add it to your reports later. You'll notice here I'm on New York federal uh, legislation. I can just click on that to change to, for instance, um, US federal common size and weight and see if we're still legal, which, which indeed we are. So that's been quite a whistle-stop tour, I guess, of uh, where to find this weights, dimensions, and center of gravity information and how to use it within the app. Um, I just want to do a quick recap, uh, and then if anyone would like to add any ask any questions in the chat, please do. Um, uh, Jens, Jens will, will uh, draw my attention to them if there are any questions. So I know we've covered quite a lot in a short time. Uh, if anyone would feel that they would benefit from having a personalized demo for yourself or colleagues, we'll be happy to set that up for you. Um, you know, you can just leave a comment in the chat or after the webinar. For those of you who aren't using the app, I know we have a lot of valued customers joining us um, on the webinar today. If, if there's anyone that isn't using, yet using the app, you're welcome to take a free trial um, from our homepage. If you integrate your NTA membership details, your trial will automatically be upgraded from seven to 30 days. And uh, NTA members also qualify for a discount of uh, $50 off their license for, per year. So that just brings the cost of a subscription for one year to $399. Our next webinar will focus on adding pusher and tag axles. Uh, to increase carrying capacity and it's on scheduled for the 25th of August. So if you save the date now, you will receive an invitation to register closer to the time. And that's pretty much it for me. Um, we we will obviously, Jens, do you have some questions? Do you want to come in with some questions there? Uh, well, well, just before we go, there's just a question that's come up there about is there a, um, a tractor trailer combination calculator? And and I was wondering if you could if you could just um, put a trailer onto the back of a tractor there briefly just to just to demonstrate that. Okay. We do have a few more minutes here, so um, might as well. So you can uh, filter by tractors in in this home screen. And then, for instance, uh, maybe you want to take a, a Kenworth. So some of the information has not been provided for this vehicle, but we can just uh, input that ourselves. I'm going to make up some, some values here, which may not be very um, realistic, but bear with me. So we've got the, the weights table behaving normally for us. Then we can add a fifth wheel here. Again, you can choose one from that's available in the market or you can use a template. So we haven't really used a temp template uh, yet, so I'm just going to use a template here. And the way the template works, the graphics are very generic, but there's a lot of flexibility in what you can do. So you know, you've got a lot of uh, different fields here that you can change. And everything is just updated on the fly as you go. You can change the weight of this, obviously. And then we get to adding our tractor, or our trailer, rather. You can choose a semi-trailer. Once again, you can use any of these templates to, uh, to, to put on a one, two, three, or four axle trailer. So let's just use a three axle semi-trailer. And then you'll see that the menu is extended here so that, you know, we had a vehicle body equipment and payload above. Now we have the same for the trailer. So we have the trailer chassis, body, so we'll just maybe use a curtain side for this one.
and then you can uh, carry on with with uh, equipment on the trailer and we can also we'll just try a, a detailed payload here so a simple payload is a water or sand based load an evenly distributed load whereas we can switch to detailed payload and specify uh, itemized uh, payload items so here's something i've added to my my personal library previously like a crate of apples we can put them on there and you can see we're we are overloaded here uh, on the, the the total which has been specified as 25 26 000. it's probably not right i should have overridden that so let me override that to maybe 40 000. oh sorry it's the growth combination weight rating sorry And we can add, uh, duplicate those payload items just by, by uh, using this copy payload item feature here and start adding them as we go, as we go along. So we should at some point become overloaded again. There we go. And I also didn't show you the, um, the top view. Those those creative apples I've I've uh, created with no width, so that's uh, <laughs> yeah, that's making more sense. Okay, and I'm just going to switch back to side view so I can show you what the the uh, PDF report would look like. So any view that I'm currently in over here, you already saw the center of gravity view. There's a turning radius view, top view. Uh, I can export those to a PDF for my customer. And this PDF is customized with my logo. Uh, I can add any additional notes that I would like. And there's also a sign off area at the bottom here. Um, so you know, once you've agreed with your customer what you're going to do, you can, you can print off this um, professional report to be shared with them. And it's just that, uh, you know, record and writing of, of what was signed off. Uh, Sergei, there's, a, there's another question here um, about the software availability and cost. Maybe you can just answer that. So in terms of availability, uh, you, can, you can just uh, jump to our website here and start a free trial. And from within the free trial, then you can, you can buy within the app. So the cost of this, the uh, subscription is $449 per year for the first user and $249 for each user thereafter. So, um, you, you know, it's $700 for two users, $950 for three users. Um, and, you know, you can, if you'd like, you can just buy through the app or you can request a quote from us. And, you know, indeed, if you, when you rate the webinar now, when I finish, when I end the webinar, if you'd like to, um, leave a request for a quote, I can send a quote to you still this morning. Okay, it looks like those are all the questions. Okay, Okay, so I'm just going to, to end the webinar now. Um, again, we'd appreciate if you could uh, leave a rating for us, leave any comments or further questions you have. If you want to receive a quote, uh, just leave that in your comment as well. And uh, we'll Hope to see you back again on Wednesday, 25th of August. You can you can keep an eye on your inbox for an invitation to that webinar. Thank you very much. Have a good day and goodbye.